Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner covering the theory of Python, and this is Python tuples and slicing. So we're going to cover what tuples are, and we're going to cover what slicing is. Note that slicing does work for strings, it works for bytes, it also works for all of the sequences. Okay, So we've covered before iterables, and we talked about sequences. Strings and bytes are sequences of you know, characters. Uh, in the case of strings, it's a sequence of code points in Unicode. In the case of bytes, it's a sequence of numbers between 0 and 255. Okay? And this, is, this introduces one of the fundamental concepts in computer science, which is the concept of the array. Okay? A tuple is an array of references to Python objects. Okay, so what's an array though? Well, an array is we take a region of memory, okay? Remember, all memory in computers are composed of bits and organized by bytes. And we give each element of the array the same size, right? In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight elements. And each of these elements has a specific size. And then we have the start of this region, then we have the end. Okay. And if we wanted to look up element, let's say, let's see, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say we wanted to look up element three, right? So we want to look up that element. So we want to find where does that element start. So what we do is we take start, and then we add the size times three. And that will give us the starting point of that element. So we can look at that element and just jump right to it in memory. Arrays are very powerful in the modern CPU world because of the way that they process arrays. And if you wanted to use arrays that had, instead of references to Python objects, actual values that can be processed, you want to look at the NumPy module. And NumPy module can really unlock the power of modern CPUs. And there's other stuff like uh, TensorFlow that allows you to unlock the power of GPUs and stuff like that. Okay, Tuples are immutable. That means that once you create a tuple, you cannot change what objects that the tuple refers to. However, the objects themselves may be mutable. Okay, so that can be a little bit confusing. Okay, and when we cover a tuple of tuples, because, you know, a tuple is a Python object, that's going to give us the tree data structure that we've hinted at so many times that we're going to cover later. When you're thinking of using a tuple, you should always ask yourself whether or not you should use a list or a generator instead. A list is a mutable tuple, and a generator we've covered already before generates values on the fly. These might be perfectly good solutions for the problem you're looking at. Let's talk about how to define or how to describe tuples in Python. So in Python, there's several ways to define a tuple. The first way is we have a single expression followed by a comma. And what this is, this is a one tuple, a tuple of length one that just contains the expression. Right? You can also have multiple expressions, one after the other, separated by commas. And you can end with a comma, but you don't have to. This is optional. And what this will give, this will give you an end tuple. In this case, this is three, but you can have as many as you want. Okay. Now you can also have two parentheses open and close right next to each other, and what this gives you is the empty tuple. Okay. If you were to have an expression inside of a parenthesis, this is not a tuple, this is just the expression. So that's mathematic things, this is not a tuple. So not a tuple. But if you were to have inside a parenthesis an expression with a single comma afterwards, then this is the one tuple again. And you can, of course, have many elements inside the parentheses, right? Maybe ending with a comma, it doesn't matter. This is the end tuple, tuple of length of the number of expressions you have there. And there's two other ways, well, three other ways. So the first way is you have a comprehension inside of parentheses. So that this does not give you a tuple. This actually gives you a generator. It's a different way to specify a generator. We'll cover this when we cover comprehensions. But you also have the tuple function that you can pass in some kind of iterable. 
and this will give you back a tuple, obviously. And we haven't really talked about this. We'll talk about it with comprehensions, but I want to whet your appetite for this. Inside of a function, you can pass in comprehensions, especially ones that take iterables. And the comprehensions will also be converted into a tuple. Okay. Comprehensions, you'll note them because they're expressions that say like x for x in. Okay. So you'll see that something for x, something for something. Okay. So that's how you create tuples. What can we do with tuples? Just like strings, you can take the tuple, we'll use t for tuple, and you can access it with the element i. This will return the ith or i plus one element. And remember it's zero based. So zero is the first, one is the second, two is the third, and so on. Okay, so typically, again, I will say zeroth or oneth or tooth so that it, it's distinguished from the ordinals in, in English. All right. We can also use negative indexes. So if I take um, negative i, where i is an integer, this is the same as taking t times the length of the t and subtracting i, right? So that's, so you can go backwards if you want to. Note that if we go out of bounds, it will give us the index error, the same error that we see when we go out of bounds on strings. Okay. We can also do something called slicing. So I'm going to talk about slicing now. Okay. And this works for strings. It works for tuples. It works for bytes. Okay. What slicing does is you start with your sequence and then you have a start and you have an end. I'm going to use A and B. And what this will do is it returns a tuple, or if it's a string, a string, or if it's bytes, it's bytes, which is basically, it's going to start with A, and then it's going to give you A plus one, and so on, until the element before B. So it's not going to include the Bth element. It's going to include everything up to B. Okay. If we are to drop one of the things, like let's say we have just t colon b, and this means you start at t of zero, and then you t of one, and so on, up to t of b minus one. And if we were to drop the other side, then this would start at t of a, then go to t of a plus one, and so on, up to t of the end. And then for the end, I'm just going to put minus one. Okay, minus one is the last element in the sequence. Okay, and if you were to have t with just a colon in the middle, then this would just give, give you basically t back. But it gives you a copy of t. I meant to put a c there. So that gives you a copy of t. Okay, and this works for strings, it works for bytes, it works for everything. Note that you can also use negative numbers. So negatives are okay. Okay. You can also specify a step with slicing. So we can have t, which goes from start to end, and we can stay a step. And when we specify this third element, it says how many to increment by. Typically the step is one if we don't specify it, which allows us to do things like we can say t, let's start from the last element, let's go to the fifth from the last element, and let's iterate by minus one. So we're basically taking the tuple in reverse. Okay. Note a couple things. Note. Out of bounds is okay. Okay. So if we were to take, let's say t has two elements. So only t0 and t1 make any sense. Then in that case, t of five to seven will give you the empty tuple. Okay. So when you go out of bounds, it doesn't raise an error or an exception. It just doesn't return anything. Okay. So you can say, for instance, t from one comma nine. And what that will give you is it just gives you the first element, t of one. And then that's it. All right. It's pretty interesting. You should play around with this to get familiar with this syntax and to understand how it works. Okay. Very powerful. Slicing is a very powerful concept in Python. All right, let's talk a little bit about tuple math. So we can do some math with tuples. 
there's two operations that are interesting. One is when you have a tuple plus another tuple. This is going to do concatenation, just like it does with strings. And we can also take a tuple and we can multiply it by some integer i. And either direction is okay. And this does the multiplication, just like we saw with strings. So it's basically going to take t plus t plus t plus t um, i times. All right. We can also test. We say x is in t, or x is not in t. And this checks each value of t to see if x is one of those values. It's going to test that x is equal to some t of some i, where i is in t, is one of the elements in t. OK. We can do len of t. I'm sorry I write len this way. This probably harkens back to my math with log ln. So I write my logs, natural logs as ln in cursive like that. So len of t will give you the length of t. We can do max, which will return the greatest element in t. And min will return the least element in t. Okay. We also have all of some tuple. And what all does is make sure, makes sure that each element inside the tuple is true. If any of them are false, this is false. If, if all of them are true, this is true. And we also have any of t. And any says if any of the values of t are true. Okay. I should mention here we have a reversed. And reversed can take any tuple, string, bytes, or whatever. And what it returns is an iterator that goes backwards. That's pretty useful. We also have sum, S-U-M, and we can pass in some tuple T, a tuple of you know, floats or whatever you want. And this will add them all together using regular addition. And we also have another version where you can take sum of T and then some starting value. And it'll start with start and then add each element of T to that starting value. One other that I want to mention that is probably weird that you don't uh, see often is div mod. And what div mod takes is you take two numbers, a comma b, and it returns a tuple where the first is floor division a divided by b, and the second element is the modulo. So it gives you the floor division and the remainder at the same time. Okay. There's only a couple methods on tuple. So we have t.index. And so we can specify where is the index, and it will raise a value error if uh, raise a value error if it's missing. We can also do the same kind of thing we did with strings where we have from start to end or optionally. And then we also have t.count. And I believe t.count x comma start comma end is also available. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.